Hi, I'm Rob Kirkpatrick, KI6HNA with Precise RF. And today we're going to be uh, unboxing, assembling, and operating of the HD3 QRO magnetic loop antenna from Precise RF. When you receive your HD3 QRO antenna from Precise RF, it'll be shipped in two packages. The first package will contain the majority of the antenna parts. The second package will contain the antenna mast. Inside the box, you will find that there is a package content list, a 15-day product return policy, and a detailed HG3 QRO instruction manual. We have the HG3 Plus controller. We have the HG3 tuner. We've got two mounting brackets for the tuner to the mast. We have 50 feet of control cable. We've got an interface cable from the tuner to the copper loop. We have a DC input cable to the controller. We've got the copper induction loop. And we've got the radiated loop. So here are the contents of the box. We've got the HG3 QRO tuner. We've got two mounting brackets for the tuner. We've got documentation. We've got a 50-foot RS-232 control cable. We've got the HG3 Plus controller. We've got the radiated loop, the induction loop. We have a DC power cable for the controller and we have an RJ58 to interface between the tuner and the loop. The second package contains the QRO mast. It comes in this bag. It includes a guy wire set if you choose to use it. The mast has already been pre-assembled with the radiation clamps at the top. The bottom of the mast features a half-inch pipe thread that can be used to support it to your mount. For today's demonstration, we're going to be using this heavy-duty tripod. This tripod is sold by others third-party, like MFJ or Buddy Pole. It requires a half-inch pipe thread coupler. For your application, it could be outside, it could be in an attic. You're going to have to determine what's the best method for mounting this antenna. Outside, you're going to deal with winds, so you want something sturdy. If it's inside an attic, uh, you can get away with something a little less rigid, but still using the half-inch pipe thread. If you're on a deck, then there's a number of different methods for mounting this antenna. To get started, get yourself a clean workspace area with lots of room around. We're going to install the mast to the tripod by screwing in the half-inch connectors. Now that we've finished assembling the mast to the tripod, it's time for us to assemble the tuner. The tools we'll need to complete this job is a Phillips screwdriver, a regular screwdriver, some wire cutters, and a tape measure. The time has come to set the mast height. The mast is developed in three sections. We're only going to use the top section. The center section is going to remain at the bottom. In order to set this, you turn the top section counterclockwise and it loosens it. Turning it clockwise locks it. At this point, I want to set up 16 inches from the top of the mast to the top of the section two. Once it's there, lock both sections. That'll set the accurate height. Now it's time to mount the tuner to the mast. To start with, we need to measure 34 inches from the top of the mast to the top of the tuner bracket. Next, we'll take our tuner. We'll place it 
over the mast and we'll install the tuner brackets. And to do that we'll use a flat washer and a wing nut. When you get the first couple on, you can adjust the height to match your 34 inches. From there, we'll need to align the tuner box so it's in the same plane as the bracket in front. So you can see the bracket here, the tuner needs to be rotated so that falls in line. At that point, we can tighten up the remaining tuner connections. Next, we're going to take the radiation loop and install it onto the top bracket. Simply place it in the top bracket and bring up the, uh, the bottom clip. Don't push it all the way in at this time, just let it sit there and hang free. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to unwind it and we're going to connect it up to the SO239 connectors on the tuner. Once those are installed in tight, you can come back and you can adjust this right or left until you've got your loop looking correct. When it is correct, put your finger on the top of the bracket and ratchet it back in until it's tight. That completes the installation of the radiation loop. Next, we're going to install the copper induction loop to the mast. To position it just below the radiation loop in front, and when you get that thing, just snap it into the mast. And that's all there is to it. All right, the final assembly here is to connect the RJ58 coax from the loop to the bottom of the tuner. And we're going to use two tie wraps to hold it in place. So what we want to do here is take the tie wrap and set it up so that it goes around the back side of the mast and keep it away from the radiation loop as all possible. If it's dressed either way across here, there's very high voltages on either point and it'll arc in and it won't be fun. So I, I simply just dress it. and then trim off the excess. This completes the assembly of the HD3QRO antenna. Now we're going to move into the controller and interface. Now it's time to interface the magnetic loop antenna to its controller. And to do that, you'll need some coax. We happen to have 50 feet of RG8 here. We do not supply the coax because every installation is different. We do send you 
50 feet of a DB9 connector, male, female ends, that interfaces the control signals between the two items. We also have a power DC power cable that plugs into your bench power supply, and it can run between 11 and 15 volts at about 2.5 amps when it's operating. We have the controller. We're going to be using an external SWR meter into an ICOM radio. Okay, we just added our DC power into the unit. I've connected a coax between the ICOM radio and the input of the SWR meter. The output of the SWR meter now goes to the RF input on the antenna controller. Okay, to recap, we've plugged in our DC power, we've plugged in our control cable to the antenna, we've plugged in the RF output that feeds the antenna, we plugged in the RF input, which comes from the SWR meter, and from the SWR meter to the radio. And that completes all the necessary connections between the system. It's time to power up the unit and initialize the system. You can see here the question is, initialize tuner? Yes. By applying yes, it'll go out and find its limits and then set it to 20 meters. If you said no, it would leave it exactly where it's at. So we're going to say yes. You can see the step remote turning. There's going to be a green LED that appears here when it reaches its limit. And now it's going to set itself for 20 meters. You can also notice that the bellows is now rising on the vacuum cap. And the display is set up for 20 meters. Okay, we are now set up for our first session. Please refer to the manual for any questions. At this point, we're going to go ahead and manually tune the antenna to the 20 meter band. To do that, we select the F1 key band and then select F2 to go from 30 meters to 20 meters. Once we're at 20 meters, I'm going to select 14.150 megahertz as my operating frequency, and we're going to tune for maximum audio. So I'm going to bring the audio level up, and by rotating the uh, tune knob, the audio level is going to peak. That means at this point that the antenna is in resonance with the frequency that we've selected. Okay, at this point, we're going to tune for a minimum SWR. To do that, I have the radio in AM mode at about 5 watts. You can also use CW mode. When the mic is keyed, you can see that the SWR is sitting at over 3 to 1, and the bar graph is about midpoint. The knob has a fine tune and course adjustment. We're going to start in the course mode and slowly turn it and watch the SWR. You can see how it's dropped and it came back up. We'll put the controller in fine tune mode and fine tune the SWR down to a one to one match. That completes tuning the antenna. Now we're going to tune the antenna for 20 meters with the auto tune feature. To do that, we want to maximize the audio on the radio again, like we did in the previous step. Then what we'll do is we'll key the microphone and hit the auto function and then hit OK. And we'll watch the SWR. You'll see it dropped quickly and it goes back into fine tune and it sets itself. So at this point, we're transmitting 3 watts. We have an SWR of 1.0 with an ERP of 100% going to the antenna. That completes the auto-tune feature. Hi, I'm Rob Kirkpatrick, KI6HNA with Precise RF, and today we're going to install the 80 meter option to the QRO antenna. When you receive your 80 meter option kit, it will include the LMR 600 radiation loop, two 90 degree SO239 connectors, 
the Edel clamp, two tie wraps, an SO239 extension, and four cable clamps. You will also receive detailed instructions. You may want to follow along with the video. Our first step is going to be to install the LMR600 loop. We'll just simply unwind it. And if you look at the back side of the antenna, you'll see that there's an open clamp up here. We want to insert it in the clamp and click it in a little and not tighten it as of yet. The next step is to assemble the SO239 extension using two of the SO239 90 degree elbows. Insert one of the elbows into the extension and firmly tighten it. Take the second SO239 elbow, place it in the first one you just installed and tighten it. So when you're done, you'll have a, an offset. Using a Phillips screwdriver, I installed the Adele clamp on this corner of the tuner, and now I want to place the uh, SO239 assembly through the Adele clamp so that the threads are protruding past the tuner. And we'll go ahead and tighten it. Okay, next it's time to connect our 80 meter loop. We'll start by taking the first connector and connect it into the left side of the Adele clamp. We'll disconnect the cable going to the tuner and place it up in the 90 degree block. And finally, we'll connect the other side of it back into the tuner. That completes the wiring of the loop. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and take these clamps and clamp the uh, loops together. So to start with, we'll go ahead and place the uh, tie wrap through the antenna loop. To the back side again. And then finish connecting the tie wrap. And tighten it up and then cut it off. We'll repeat this process for the other side. This is how your antenna should look when it's completely assembled. Lastly, we have to tell the controller to switch to the 80 meter mode. To do that, press the F3 mode key. It'll come up at, say, 40 toggle. We'll switch it to 80. Press the F3 key again. Now the system's ready to run 80 meter. Should you find the need, you have to remove the radiation loop from the top clamp. Simply Locate a flat bladed screwdriver, place it in the plastic section above the loop, press in, and the clamp will just open up. Okay, in wrapping up today's video, um, I want to let you know that if you want to run 40 meters again, simply swap these two coaxes, let the 80 meter loop hang. The 80 meter loop will not affect the 40 meter operation of the antenna, so it's an easy way to go back and forth between the two. Hi, I'm Rob Kirkpatrick with Precise RF. Thank you for watching.